Hi, and welcome to this week's episode of Bridges, the television program by the Ministry of Youth, Sports and Community Empowerment, which showcases programs, activities and opportunities offered through the ministry. I am Diara Springer, and with me is the Barry Springer-Lewis, sitting in for Liam Paris Boyer and Tamisha Doughty. This week, we are on location at the Historic Parliament Buildings, located at Trafalgar Street, Bridgetown. These buildings were erected between 1870 and 1874 and have been the meeting place for both Chambers of Parliament, the Upper and Lower House, since 1874. In recent times, members of the Barbados National Youth Parliament have also graced the Chambers, with the most recent opportunity occurring on Friday, June 30th, when they debated the issue of mental health. We will be sharing excerpts from that debate and much more. Madam Speaker, mental health is like the story of the sheep, the 99, and we must go back for the one, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, no one in the Bible was tested and tried more than Job, Madam Speaker, and Job had faith as small as a mustard seed in my mother. Madam Speaker, Latoya Blackman was honored for her skills in netball. She was recognized for being Barbados' most cap player and hailed among the top four players in the world. Blackman has 170 caps and is currently preparing for the Netball World Cup in Cape Town from July 28th to August 6th. We caught up with Blackman at the Wilde Gymnasium where she was being honored. A well-deserved honor indeed, one which she shared with her daughter, Kenya Blackman, who also plays netball and is already doing quite well. I wish that I was doing this for the 50th time since becoming Minister of Sports. Uh, too often in this country, persons who would have contributed to sports go unnoticed. And I'm hoping that this evening is the start of a journey in terms of government recognizing those persons who would have contributed at the level that Latonia did. For someone to be representing the country for 170 times plus what is coming is a clear indication of the dedication, the love of the sports, the love of self and country in relation to this. And I think this evening is really a small tribute in my mind um, to somebody who would have contributed at that level and I really do salute you, Latonia. What I'm hoping for is that we can have a situation where ever so often persons who would have reached the level that you reach in terms of your representation of the country is recognized. I know there are a lot of other persons who after they've gone will say a lot of positive things but you're getting it in your living years. Um, I suspect, like many sports people, that you'd have walked through the fire on several occasions, but you came out at the other end <clears throat> as the best team. And what we're about to do this evening, like I said, is something that you deserve. Um, I'm hoping, like um, the doc would have mentioned before, that you continue. I saw Venus Williams at 43. Still got a white guard entry into Wilmington this year. Um, and I want for you not only to be involved in the sports at that level, but to pass on your skills and knowledge to others. Latonia was known to us um, also because her mother, um, her late mother who died this year, worked as a, a caretaker at our um, Valerie uh, facility. Everything that I have accomplished in that ball, my mother was always proud of me, always beside me. She pushed me. Everything, even if she always tell me, even if I get to go and play for money or I play in New Zealand or elsewhere, she's proud of me because I made her feel that I belong up there with those people. And I'm just happy that my daughter was able to make it on the 16th team. My mother received every phone call 
as she progressed through the on the 16, I didn't receive any. My mother had all the phone calls and she was so happy to know that Kenya was going to represent Barbados. It was interesting to, to talk about um, her mother because um, Latonia was always very close um, to her mother. And in going to Valerie, you also know that she was also very close in terms of the development of um, netball among the young people um, at Valerie. So much so that uh, on evenings, um, after you know, Latonia would, would, would do her duties at home and so on, she would come over in the evenings and, uh, and help the younger people. And also, she would have helped form the, the Pride of Villa Club, of which we heard of the exploits. I think either last year or the year in front they would have won, and then this year um, they would have won again. And no doubt, due to the total influence of um, the Tanya Blackman, I went to Valerie. I think it was earlier this year to a tournament that you organized, and I could not believe that one individual would have been able to galvanize so many different teams from as far as St. Lucie to participate in an activity that you stage, um, I think it was a one-day rally. And I was amazed at that. And I'm saying to you that rest assured that as long as I am minister, we will do every single thing to make those persons who have contributed at your level known and recognized. One of the first things that I asked for, and it is still front of mind, is to have a National Sports Hall of Fame. And I'm sure that whenever that is in place, that your name will be etch. Latonia Blackman is a, is a young lady who um, moves very easily, um, very cool and calm, but that belies her um, demeanor on the court. Um, very solid player. She would have played in all um, of the positions in that ball. I know that for a fact. And um, she really is a, a heroine um, at the community level and a heroine for, for young women in Barbados. What we're looking to do to honor you is to erect a large billboard on this island that will have the image of you that will be seen by every single person who I, I, I have been toying with some ideas I was suggesting here because of the sporting complex. We're looking at the Grand Adam Airport so when persons enter this country they will see. But that is our tribute to you and I hope that your daughter and others in that ball will cherish what you are looking for. The Community Development Department is proud to have trained thousands of Barbadians over the years in various disciplines. Congratulations and thank you for participating. To persons who have completed a course but have not yet collected their certificate, please contact us at 535-1669 or 535-3191 Monday to Thursday between 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. You can also visit us online at comdev.gov.bb and click Request Certificate to send us your details. The Community Development Department, we are committed to serving you and our communities. Over at the Ministry of Labour, Erica Watson, Program Manager, Social Security and Third Sector, spoke about why young people were the most vulnerable in the labour sector because of their lack of experience, tenure and the challenged economy which has impacted youth easily gaining employment. She also spoke about the Job Start Plus programme and how their shortcomings in the job market could be bridged. There's a number of reasons youth in particular is a vulnerable group when it comes to unemployment in that they're they are not, they're competing with persons who have more skills and more experience. Um, and when the economy is not generating enough opportunities, then the challenge is the youth finding those opportunities without competition. Outside of that, normally there is unemployment. Unemployment will always exist. Um, and when it comes to young people, they're the ones that tend to be most vulnerable to losing jobs if they are in a job because they have least tenure. 
So that is one of the factors that contribute. What the program is trying to do is we recognize that youth has a lot of advantages. Young people are more open to new technology, they're trainable, um, they bring a new energy into organizations and so on. So we're trying to market that to our partners who we try to partner in the private and third sectors. And what the program does is that we recognize some of the feedback we've received from employers when it comes to employing young persons is things like they're not ready for the workplace, um, sometimes it's things like attitude, um, how they behave in the workplace, outside of the issues of um, skills that they may not have and so on. So what the Job Start Plus program does is provide what we call World of Work training. This is essentially a program where we try to provide them with those skills and the knowledge that they need to more effectively transition into the workplace. And, um, and we also provide some career planning in the program because oftentimes the young persons limit themselves to the lack of knowledge of what's the opportunities in the labor market, lack of knowledge of what they want. They have sometimes an idea of where they want to go but they haven't really done that kind of detailed planning. So we try to facilitate that and all of that helps. So when it comes to building networking and so on, we kind of provide that gap, that network, um, become a medium for them in that we market the young persons directly to our partners and try to help build those relationships. If you're interested, we say that you can email us at jobstartplus at labor.gov.bb and then we will forward the registration form. Stephen Rowe, Manager of the Sports Development Unit at the Ministry of Youth, Sports and Community Empowerment, joined us to give us an update on the Ministry's Scholastic Aptitude Test Scholarship Program. The program assists athletes in their quest in meeting the requirements for entry to North American institutions. Since studying for the SATs can be expensive, Mr. Rose said that the ministry's intervention is pivotal to giving access to persons who economically would be unable to access the training. The Ministry of Youth Sports and Community Informa, as you're aware, is responsible for a number of areas of focus, one of which is sports and developing our youth in and through sports. Now, we have a number of youth in Barbados who are athletically gifted and they're able to attract um, athletic scholarships at the USA colleges and universities. You may be aware that a part of the prerequisite for entering those colleges is having successfully completed an SAT. It used to be the Scholastic Aptitude Test but now they just call it the SATs. The preparation for the SATs is a fairly intense process and can be quite costly. The cost ranges from anywhere in the region of $450 to $1,500 and sometimes even more expensive. What we found is that some of our athletes are unable to access the training because the cost is outside of their financial reach. The ministry in assessing the situation determined that we need to place all of our athletes on a level playing field. And so we determined that we would offer the athletic scholarships in the area of SAT preparation for those athletes who are unable to access the program. The program is coordinated by the Sports Development Unit. We would have had some 22 persons who completed the program successfully um, last year. And so we felt it necessary to offer the program again this year. The program started on the 4th of July and will run until the 27th of July this year. We're looking to cater to another 20 or 22 for this cohort. We would have looked at the situation with respect to the athletes and recognized that some of them were being disadvantaged. And so we came up with the initiative of putting the program in place to make sure that there's a level of playing field, that we can create the conditions for them to be able to access the scholarships. The first beneficiaries, they were very successful in the program. And I should add that the program is not just focused on the 
math and English, which are the, um, the key components of the SAT test. We also have things like researching the best university fit for your career, understanding and conquering the university application process, choosing the right majors and minors for your degree programs, how to research scholarships, grants, and loans. And, and that's a very important one because once the, the child reaches the university or the college, there are often opportunities available at the university or college for additional grants and additional funding. So to guide the children in the correct direction, where they're able to uncover this information and be able to access these grants and these additional scholarships is important. Then of course we have the lessons and the, and the practicals in the SAT, Maths and English. And I say lessons and practicals because they will be required to do some practicals to make sure that they get enough practice. And the program culminates with a full virtual SAT trial exam. Right, so as you can see, it's a, a fairly packed agenda for the four week period. The members of the Barbados National Youth Parliament attended a week long training session at the Ministry's Sky Mall, Haggett Hall offices, and at the Hilton Hotel to prepare them for their third parliamentary debate addressing the topic youth mental health. The training included looking at the psychiatric system on the island and a tour of the psychiatric hospital to get a better understanding of how mental health is addressed in Barbados. The robust debate presented many solutions for the citizens of Barbados. Let's take a look. On behalf of the Ministry of Youth, Sports and Community Empowerment, I am pleased and honored to welcome all of you to this week's training workshop. This training workshop has been specifically designed for you, youth parliamentarians, where you can expand your knowledge and improve your understanding of the, on the topic mental health and of course parliamentary procedures. All of this is in preparation for a debate which all of you know is coming up. You parliamentarians make use of this opportunity where you can gain valuable information from each other and of course the facilitators as well. I encourage you to make the best of this workshop and I'm looking forward to the debate on the 30th of June. I feel very honored to be chosen as the Speaker of the House. This is my first time. I have been in youth parliament for seven, several years and it is somewhat of an honor and a privilege. I am very grateful that I'll be presiding over the House today. I recognize the Honorable Shaquem Howell. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Permit me, Madam Speaker, to start by saying, sorrows, sorrows, peers. <laughs> Madam Speaker, it is sad, a sad, sad, sad day for this nation. My heart is grieving, Madam Speaker, but let me start by addressing the elephant in the house, the epidemic of mental ill health in this nation. I am happy to see all of the young people here today to talk about the issue that pertains to mental health and stigma. And I hope that we can come to some sort of agreement and for those who may not be as aware to learn something from young people, because we do have mental health issues, we do have problems that do affect us, and this is a, something that we, as a community of young people, we deem it necessary to have our voice. So I do hope that um, people who are listening, they are learning and taking note because the young people are here and we are present in Barbados. Mental health, yes, we acknowledge from the many repetitive um, presentations today that it is a problem. We have an issue, we have a crisis. And our resolution seeks to address these crises. And one thing that I will be um, presenting today is specifically in the resolution uh, C, which is... 
I'm glad that this debate is happening. It's about time that we get the youth's perspective on mental health in Barbados. Mental health issues that face us, especially coming out of COVID-19. So I generally feel good about the debate. I feel good about the outcome of the debate and feel good about how I spoke in the debate. Madam Speaker, however, the issue comes when men suppress their emotions and they don't feel comfortable enough to speak out about their mental health issues and about the issues that they're facing. Um, I felt like the topic of mental health was a, is a crucial topic that we need to have more active conversations about. Our families may not show love, but nicotine will, alcohol will, molly will. These are concepts that run rampant among our people, that run rampant among our youth. This is our reality, Madam Speaker. This is why I urge not only policymakers, but teachers, parents, students. I urge Barbados to take mental health seriously. So the debate topic was one which surrounded mental health and uh, I think that it was a very timely topic. However, the conversation that surrounds mental health shouldn't be something that's solely focused on when it is trending, which is what is happening in the case because we, we heard these shocking statistics today about the number of Barbadian young persons and even outside of young people, the amount of persons in Barbados who are suffering from mental illnesses and the lack of care and the lack of services that are provided for them. Show the direct link between social media and the destruction of mental health in our youth. Which social media and, and social media causes severe depression in 7% of them and anxiety disorder in 20% of them, Madam Speaker. As a youth parliament, we need to combat these things in this bill for it to be effective. Uh, coming out of the debate, I think we addressed many issues that needed to be addressed. So many things were said that needed to be said. And to hear it from a youth perspective was necessary for all Barbadians as well, which I'm glad that we streamed today. You have talent and we want to see it. The Community Independent Celebration Secretariat invites you to showcase your talent at this year's Parish Talent Competition in dance, drama, singing, poetry, mime, instrumental and unique non-traditional forms of entertainment. For further details, please call 535-3835 or visit the office in the Ministry of Youth, Sports and Community Empowerment, Sky Mall, Haggett Hall, St. Michael. The National Sports Council launched their 2023 summer camps in a press conference at the Wilde Gymnasium. During the launch, Director of Sports Neil Morrow lauded the longevity of the NSC's summer camp program and the contribution it has made to Barbados. The Honourable Charles Griffith, Minister of Youth, Sports and Community Empowerment, who also attended the launch, made it clear that the National Sports Council Summer Camps stressed the importance of including life skills training in sports. The camps will be held at 18 locations island-wide and participants will be able to access 20 sporting disciplines from July 17th to August 25th. A year and a half I came to the ministry and from the very jump I was asking corporate Barbados to get involved in supporting our young people as it relates to sponsoring different events. And the fact that you are here this morning is, um, you don't know how important it is for me for you to be involved in sponsoring an activity that provides a captive group, so to speak, with a wholesome environment to borrow the words of from one of you, a structured environment that will read down to a lot of our young people. I believe we, we probably pass a thousand every year. And the fact that we have been doing this for 38 years, I, I would assume in a similar vein that if you're a parent, you should be now be prepared to do a very, very good job from practice. Mandate of the National Sports Council is to develop sport throughout um, Barbados. And uh, the vehicle, or one of the vehicles that we do so, is through the National Sports Summer Camp, or the Summer Camp of the National Sports Council. And uh, this sports summer camp is in its 38th year. And the idea behind the sports camp, one, is to give the basics of various disciplines to um, some of the young campers, one. And two, for those who are continuing, to continue to help them to train and coach and develop um, in their respective disciplines. Um, so that brings the whole idea of development of sport um, to the fore. 
and we have over the years done very very well in fact some of our representatives some of our athletes who have come through the national sports council some camp have represented Barbados um, some of them at the CAC games and some of them have already been chosen for the primary games and these games are some of these games are quite diverse with the Olympics. And I will take the time at this, this, this juncture to congratulate um, all of those athletes. The reality is that a lot of our programs, um, I keep saying government is only pouring from one single cup. And if we can have corporate Barbados come in to help us in relation to what you're doing, it can only redound to the benefit of our young people. The fact that the Commonwealth would have decided that 2023 is the year of the youth makes it even so much more important for us to shed that light and to have that lens particularly focused on our young people. And with what 18 locations and 20 disciplines that are being offered, I am sure that at the end of the day, in a similar vein to what you would have mentioned, that these camps would have impacted your life. I'm sure that we will in some way provide an opportunity for those youngsters to, be, to learn the rudiments of the these sports that we're being, um, that are being put on the table. One of the things that I would want to say is that I am not going to preside over camps that just involve the discipline, for example, going on the football field and running up and down. All of our camps this year must include soft skills. Um, we will introduce life skills back at the main ministry. There's a team at the ministry that provides life skills to all of our programs where we have a captive, a captive group. And the same thing will obtain in relation to these summer camps. Uh, I believe we're going for six weeks. Yes, it, it, is, it is important for me that when we have youngsters that things like anger management, conflict resolution, are factored into the process because all of us are aware of what is happening on island and if my ministry is going to do anything in terms of stemming that flow then I believe that these soft skills should be embedded within every single project that we're doing as it relates to our young people. Why is he molding the youth for tomorrow? My name is Shaquille. I am from Cohort 3. I joined the B-Way AC because I had some personal issues or anger management I had to be with and I thought it was actually a good program to join to help me sharpen up my skills also in guarding. B-Way AC is strictly disciplined because it's really cut your mentality, not fully, but to show you there's better. Like there's a different way. Like, you think it one-sided, then you cut that and show you a different. So you actually got two sides you can see now. And that's where you go and sit down and tell yourself what you're going to do. That's where you make your path. That's what we find my garden and find what I really love, which is plumbing. Because I, I, I did plumbing out there. I'm really glad for everybody, for real. Thank you for the BYAC. Register today. Call 535 0180 or 535 3835. You can also visit us at www.byac.gov.bb or check us out on Instagram at Barbados Youth Advance for more information. That's it for this week. It has been a great pleasure for Diara and I. You can look out for us and our colleagues in the upcoming series, Youth Lens, starting later this year. We invite you to stay connected and keep up to date with the work of the ministry. On Instagram, the Community Development Department at Comdev Barbados the Division of Youth Affairs at Div Youth 246, the Sports Development Unit at sportsdevelopment.bb, the National Sports Council at NSC Barbados, Community Independence Celebration Secretariat at Community Independence 246, and the Barbados Youth Advance Corps at Barbados Youth Advance. You can also stay connected on Facebook by visiting Community Development Department, Division of Youth Affairs, National Sports Council, and the Community Independent Celebration Secretariat, or feel free to call us at 535-3835. Thank you for joining us, and please continue to enjoy your week.